It's Dustin 23 here, and today's Knife Therapy, we're doing it outside. It's so pretty outside today. I'm uh, at a nature trail behind my house. We're going to be checking out the Off-Grid Knives Stinger XL. So let's pan on down. Y'all let me know what y'all think about doing this like this. Uh, I enjoy being outside and I can't go too often, so I gotta seize the moment. So the Singer XL came in two different variations. You have the Coyote G10 on this one with the gray blade. Hopefully the colors are coming out uh, okay. And you could also get it in the all blacked out version. Sorry, I had to reshoot some of the parts because the wind got too bad and it couldn't use the footage. And now you're gonna hear my dog, I apologize. So the black version is a black wash finish. Uh, it looks really nice. And you also have a stone wash finish on the gray. The coating held up really well throughout my testing and you'll see that here soon. Here's the quick specs. You have an overall length of nine and five sixteenth inches. So this is a full size EDC knife. You have a four and an eighth inch blade. Grip area is four and a quarter. Your handle scale thickness is 0.59. And your close width from here to here is uh, 1.51 inches. Your blade stock thickness is a whopping 0.158 inches. And all right, let's take a close look at this. You have a spear point, or you could call it a bayonet grind here. Uh, I think it's a nice, attractive blade shape. These are gonna be great for tip work. You have a nice robust tip because of that center line. It keeps that uh, a bunch of thickness all the way to that tip. So if you dig a lot with, with your knife, you know, into wood and stuff like that, you should be just fine. Uh, wait till you see some of the stuff I did with it. Um, but being that it is a spear point grind and this is a flat grind, it does not come down to the thinnest edge. But this is geared toward more of a, like a work knife or a harder use of knife. So I can't really fault it there. Um, you do have a sharpening notch that is done very, very nicely. I love whenever they go up like that and before the plunge line. So you can have a lot of sharpening life uh, left to the knife until it starts to widen up in the back. You do have some fine jimping right here. I call it medium traction. I will say in the saber grip, you're gonna wanna stay on that pad. Whenever you overshoot, this thinner portion's not super comfortable when you're pushing down into material. It's not terrible, but it's just not the most comfortable. The blade steel on this is 154 CM. I think I said that earlier. Um, and now I think all there is left to do is uh, do some testing. knife came to me really sharp and just about every uh, knife I've ever gotten from off grid all came very very sharp especially the ones from Best Tech one of their main OEMs um, this knife being Rockwell at 61 with uh, 154 CM it should perform really well and we'll see as the test progress progress um, here we're just testing the ergos on the pine 2x4 and seeing how that edge is still biting the edge feels good uh it's nice and comfortable because you have those contoured scales and even though they're kind of thin in the thickness area they're wide so it was rather comfortable now this is where it well, i'm not going to say struggled it just wasn't as easy as uh something with a very thin edge bevel and thin behind the edge geometry would cut but i will say that the extra mass that that four inch blade has uh, really helps it out a lot. Uh, uh, that said, that tip area, you know, uh, spear point like that with the center line grind, you're gonna have uh, almost full thickness of that stock uh, at that tip. So it's it's a lot thicker at the tip, but it still manages to get the, get through the rope just fine. You'll see right here, it kind of struggles going through this uh, thick saddle leather. Now this is very, very dry leather, very hard leather. And um, this wasn't the only knife that day that I was testing that uh, struggled to get through here. This was a little bit harder of a piece than I normally cut. Um, that was a completely different piece. That was a softer piece. So it it's slicing good. It has that, that belly um, that's perfect for cutting on these flat surfaces. It was comfortable in the pinch grip. And once again, I'm using that mass a lot of the time to get through a lot of this stuff. 
the edge is feeling great there I was just testing out that tip and uh, I knew that that's where this type of grind is uh, really gonna shine is doing tip work you know starting with that tip with a cut say to get into like a plastic bottle or something or anything that you want to pierce into uh, this knife's gonna be great at it's very robust you're not gonna have to really worry about it breaking on you unless you do something stupid but if you do normal knife task or some you know normal work task you should be just fine here's that rough denim again this stuff I'm about to probably uh, either roll it a little less tight or get some um, some thinner denim because this stuff is rough that 12 ounce is way worse the 10 it just seems like there's such a big jump from the 10 ounce from the 12 10 ounces to 12 ounce here's some just other stuff that i was in uh like i said in the beginning i'm in the nature trail behind my house so i brought a just a few more things to play around with um to see how this thing was cutting because the edge was still feeling great um here of course that was no challenge that's just that rubber flooring mat here we're going to do some penetration testing on this book because if you ever stabbed into like a phone book or something like that as soon as you hit that book it compresses those pages so tight that you're not going to get through it all i mean and not unless you have super thin geometry and you can really swing hard um the angle i'm standing i mean sitting i'm kind of like squatting over it was absolutely terrible to do all this stuff i missed so many times um just a little while ago i think it was i i missed and glanced the side of that thick thick leather and uh hit a bunch of rocks um put a little roll in the edge not bad there this is that um very abrasive uh runner carpet and now we're going to go through this aluminum mailbox that my wife had for christmas <laughs> nothing crazy it's about as it's a little bit thicker than a, a, a soda can but it, it it definitely went through it like swiss cheese i could have cut that thing all the way around no problem um and i will say after i did that the the coating held up very well i had like one scratch where the the center of that grind is and um one slight roll and i think the roll was just from me hitting the rocks earlier at full force so now we're just gonna just do some stabs into the the pine two by four just to see um how how it feels in hand in the handle i'm holding the top of that handle right there i want to feel that see how much shock it's bringing into the hand and uh the the, the blade has enough weight to it that it, it carries it down pretty hard still intact tip is just fine action still good yeah this knife just very impressive well i hope y'all enjoyed that cutting footage i enjoyed making it for y'all uh let's take a look at the action on the knife uh, it's a flipper deployer you do have some fine cut jumping um, nothing pokey it's rounded over on the top right there very well tuned detent Riding on ceramic bearings with a ceramic detent ball, this thing comes out nice and fast. You had that pretty uh, heavy blade that whenever it clears that uh, detent, the momentum just carries it very, very fast. Uh, nice and drop shut action. Whenever I first got it, because like this is the one I've been testing and carrying. This one, not so much yet, but this is how they come just a, a little bit uh, tighter but they definitely break in rather quickly um, <clears throat> and then if you take it apart put your own lube clean it it'll be even smoother now let's take a look at the scales you have like I said the coyote tan g10 smooth finish they're not slippery though they're not polished or anything just smooth uh, they are contoured as you can see the handle scales being wide like that and contoured with all the chamferings nice and comfortable in the hand pretty much every test that i did it was uh, rather comfortable and it's not a super thick handle as far as this dimension <clears throat> but width wise it fills out my medium to large size hands very very uh good your hardware on the knife is t8 on the pivot and the body screws t6 on the clip the clip is tip up uh 
<laughs> deep carry, reversible, and let's check it out in the pocket. Sits nice and deep in the pocket, pretty much disappears as you can see. I like the shorter clip. It holds it in nicely. I can pull it out easy, deploy it, um, and it goes in and out without a problem. I don't have to lift anything. Just push it down and it's good. It does stay to the right side of the pocket. I like that. Now that flipper tab, you know, will, you know, touch stuff if you put, you know, say a phone or something in there. Uh, but I don't usually put much in this pocket. I do like that they put the face plates right here. So if you're not using this side for the clip, you don't have a little hole right there. Um, they definitely are robust clips. You don't see many clips where they're inset and they got three screws plus they're countersunk. Perfect lip right there. Excellent, excellent job. Uh, let's open it up. Take a look at the inside. You have two standoffs. They're just, you know, like the part spins standoffs. They're perfectly tough enough, in my opinion. You do have a lightning, big lightning holes on the show scale, but you do not have any on the lock side, which is fine. This is supposed to be a, you know, more harder use knife. Uh, your lockup is sitting at around, I don't know, I'd say 40%, maybe 50. And when I say rock solid, I mean, every every off-grid knife that I've ever gotten was bank vault. And I've done some stupid stuff with this knife. Thrown it out of a tree. Um, I was doing some target practice with it. Missed a few times. Not sure if I actually put that footage in here or not. But if not... Uh, just some stuff, some extra stuff I did with it. Ergos were, were nice. You got a, a good full size handle. It's going to fit your large, extra large hands perfectly. Now let's get your weight. First in grams. 202.5 grams and 7.1 ounces. Now it's definitely not a featherweight. You're going to know it's in your pocket. I found as long as I was wearing jeans, it's comfortable for me. Uh, shorts, I uh, usually like to go a little bit under that. The lock bar access is, is pretty good. I mean, you got enough width right here, and the lock does sit a little bit proud of the show side scale. You do have a chamfer right there. I use this part of my thumb always for bigger knives just because, uh, especially like this one, it has more lock bar tension because it's more geared for hard use and um, you know it's just a little bit more difficult to push over now for some quick size comparisons you have the cold steel recon one and the cold steel holdout uh it's just longer than both of these much similar to the recon the holdout's just a hair shorter and all next up we have the cold steel 4 max scout and uh, the off-grid rhino um, you have the same cutting edge as the scout except the scout is overall longer uh, and it, it's dwarfing the Rhino. Lastly, we have the Kaiser XL Sheepdog and the XL Bag Lighter. Um, it's about the same length as the XL uh, Sheepdog. It, it might be a hair shorter. The Sheepdog might be shorter. And it's a, you know, a decent bit longer than the XL Bag Lighter. All right, now for my nitpicks and complaints. And these are just nitpicks. I don't really have many, really any complaints with the knife. Uh, nitpicks and this is not the fault of the knife you know it's just me but if you know why you're getting this you know this is a more tactical knife that you can use for harder use edc but if you're going to use it for just regular everyday carry um, like i said if you go beyond this right here and you over choke to that swedge right there you're going to feel that it's not going to be super comfortable and being that this is a flat grind it's decently thick behind that edge so it's not the best slicer just keep a sharp edge on it and you'll be fine uh, it holds the edge for a, a, a really long time uh, I was actually kind of shocked definitely has a good heat treat on the knife the thickness behind the edge I would have loved to see a hollow grind here on both sides that would have been nice but like I said their knives are geared toward you know more heavier duty not knife use so I understand that. I don't like the uh, parts bin standoffs. You know, I, I would have either rather see a backspacer in black or something right there or just something, I don't know. Some overall thoughts and opinions. Um, 
I think it's a very well-made knife, attractive knife, very tough. Uh, it has a great heat treat on the 154 CM steel. Oh, I didn't know that. It must be uh, CPM 154. It says Crucible underneath the 154 CM. Uh, I'm not certain on that, but that's who makes... I don't know if they make regular 154 CM or not, but... Um, if you're wanting a heavier duty EDC and you don't mind, you know, a thicker grind or you do a lot of tip work, hard tip work, I think this would be an excellent knife for you. Um, I would, I would, I would recommend it. You know, I think the price is right and, uh, I think I may have a discount code. If I do just check down below in the description. So y'all let me know what y'all think about this type of video. If y'all if y'all like it, y'all want to see me do more like this, uh, I can. I'm going to try to shoot some footage on some EDC fixed blades today while I'm out in the woods. And, uh, yeah. All right, guys and girls. Hope everybody's enjoying their Saturday. I hope y'all are having a great day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.